assigning them $5,000 of service. And the money has gotten up there quite a bit. However, uh, Dr. MacArthur has a court date, I think, next week. Is that right, Sue? Tomorrow. So be praying for that, that they'll win the victory. And they've been t the, the people that are doing this to him have been told that uh, they, shouldn't, they can't touch him because of the uh, Constitution and the bylaws of the United States gives the church a right to meet and so forth. So pray for them. Then the North Valley Baptist Church. Dr. Jack Traber, same thing is going on with them. Uh, they want to get them out of their parking lot and so forth. And these are great churches and good men. And so let's pray for them. Aren't you glad that we're not having to face that kind of thing right now? God's been good to us, and so let's pray. Now, let me just say this to you. You listen to a worldly song. Listen to the world's song. And then listen to a Christian song. Which one lifts your spirit? Which one lifts you up? You'll learn by that. The Christian songs, godly Christian songs, lift you up. And they play 24 hours a day. The North Valley Baptist Church, you can go on your computer and just type in in the Baptist Church, B.C., and they play 24 hours a day. Tremendous music. And so you'd be blessed uh, for that. All right, now, Revelation 1. Revelation 1. Now, let me say this. We're not studying the book of Revelation, uh, but we are studying portions of it. If you want to understand the book of Revelation, you'll never really understand it until you study Daniel. Ezekiel and Daniel, but more so Daniel. Because what is going on in Revelation, you have a foreview of that in the book of Daniel. Now, of course, the events of Daniel happened hundreds of years ago, but they're a foresight and a foretaste of what's going to be happening in our day, what's happening now, and what will be happening in the future. And so we're talking about the book of Revelation. Now, we're not going to get in a hurry. Uh, on Wednesday evening, we're digging with Revelation 1 and maybe a few other chapters, and then in the Sunday evening, we're going to do chapter 19, 20, 21, 22. Study those chapters, if you will. Now, I want you to look at chapter 1, and we'll begin reading, and I want to read several verses because it has so much to say to us, and then we'll look into the verses and look at some chapters that we need as far as our modern day life is concerned revealed here in this passage of scripture. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show, to unveil the events in the future, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bare record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed. Now watch, folk, as you read and study Revelation, keep these verses in mind. Blessed. Now remember the word blessed. Happy approved in the sight of God. Do you want to be happy? Do you want to be approved in the sight of God? Then read his word. Study his word. Read the book of Revelation. Study the book of Revelation. Now watch this. Blessed is he that readeth, they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Did you notice that? Happy approved in the sight of God is a man or woman that reads the Bible, reads the book of Revelation. Read it and you'll be blessed. Then he goes on to say, they that hear the words of this prophecy. You hear a man preach it, or it being read in public, and you're listening to it, and you're putting it in practice. God says, you'll be blessed. And then he goes on to say, those that keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So you do you want God's blessings? Then read, hear, and keep the Bible, but primarily hear the book of Revelation. I've preached through the book of Revelation many times, and each time I see something new, something just absolutely marvelous and magnificent. The more you study it, the more you read it. And uh, we, need to, we need to be ready for these days. We need to be ready for these days. 
our couple in the back with their little children back there. Now just think for a moment about those two little children back there. If the Lord doesn't come in the next 30 years and things are the way they are now, what will those young children have to face? Now, I don't say that to scare you, young folk. I don't say that to scare you. I just simply say that the Lord uh, will keep, keep you and keep your children, take care of them, but we need to be ready for the days ahead, don't we? I need to be ready. You need to be ready. Our children, our grandchildren need to be ready. Now, verse 4. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before the throne. These are some tremendous verses. Now the seven churches are seven actual churches that were in existence in those days. And this letter was written to those seven churches. That's the first thing. So the pastor of that church and the people of that church were to hear it read, they were to read it, they were to preach it, they were to study it. And so he says here, these seven churches. However, these seven churches are a picture of the church age from Pentecost to the rapture. Now when you go through and study each church individually as we've done here before, you'll be studying from Pentecost to the revelation. And so you see, we need to be ready for these things. So there are seven actual churches, but they also represent the church age and things that are to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Now verse 5. And from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness. How many of you tonight have been lied to? You've been lied to. Let's see your hand. All right. How many of you, and you were lied to, it hurt you deeply? It hurt you deeply. Wouldn't it be a terrible thing if later on you found out this Bible was not, was, was not true? You'd be really more hurt, wouldn't you? But you don't have to worry about that. You know why? Because we have a faithful witness. Amen? We have a faithful witness. And what he says is true. And what he says is going to come to pass. Now remember, we do not understand, we do not know how much you and I are going to suffer during these days until the rapture. We don't know. We don't know. It could be very intense. It may not be as in says intense. I don't know. But I do know this. I need to be ready for it. And then I'm looking forward to the rapture when I'm taken out. Amen. In one-sixth of a second, the twinkling of an eye, the Bible says, we'll be gone. We'll be with him. And then on this earth, what a horrible set of events on this earth. But he's a faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And he hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to whom be glory, dominion forever and ever. Amen. I love this. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Now that's not the rapture. The rapture is a secret coming. He'll come in the air for us. The unsaved people on this earth, they'll think, where did they go? Well, there's a foreign, some foreign planet. Somebody come down and got them and took them away. They don't understand it. But in one-sixth of a second, we're raptured out of here. And on this earth, Satan will have a heyday for almost seven years. Now, the Bible says that day will be shortened. They'll be shortened for a little while, but almost seven years of this. And just think about that. Just think about that. Um, he's going to come with clouds, and we're going to come with him at the revelation. Won't that be something? And the Bible says he'll come riding on white horses. Now, that may be figurative, probably is, but if not, that's okay. I know how to ride. Do you? Robert, do you know how to ride a horse? Good, good, good. Good. I just want to make sure. I want you to go up. To... <laughs> I'm joking. 
Now watch what he says. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Now watch verse 8. Jesus is who? I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. I am Alpha, the first letter in the uh, Greek alphabet, and Omega, the, the last letter, and so forth and so on here. But that's in neither here nor there. But the beginning of the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. You know the uh, riots that's going on? There was one picture in Facebook of a young girl, probably looked like her in her early 20s, holding up a uh, sign. You know what it said? I'm going to hell and I'm proud of it. I'm going to hell and I'm proud of it. Did you ever think you'd see that in America? Then another lady posted on there bragging about having, listen, she bragged about having 29 abortions. She bragged about it. This is sad. But she won't brag about it at the great white throne unless she gets born again. Can you imagine having 29 babies killed and if she doesn't receive Christ as her Savior, she'll answer for every one of those babies. But those babies are going to be in heaven. Isn't that great? What a loving Savior. Amen. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. I love to hear Dr. Charles Weigel saying that. He was at Highland Park when I was there at Tennessee Temple. He was 93 years old when I was there. And he had sat back about where Robert was there on the right-hand side of the church. And I'd, I'd be sitting up in the balcony, and Dr. Robertson would stand up there, and he'd say, Doc, you got a song for us tonight? And he'd stand right up, 93 years old, all, always ready. And he'd come hobbling down the aisle with his cane, walk to the platform, put his cane on the pulpit, and of course his voice was... Not what it used to be, but he would sing that song we wanted him to sing. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus. And he'd sing that song and every student's eyes were filled with tears. He'd get through singing it and he'd get his cane and he'd look up at the student by it and he'd say, I like it, don't you? I like it, don't you? Let me tell you something, I like it, don't you? I don't understand why some Christians are not happy. I don't understand why they're not joyful. We're born again. We're headed for heaven. We're going to be with him forever and ever and ever. And can you imagine standing at the judgment seat of Christ if we've been faithful? Our record is there. We give an account. But he says to us, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. I really don't know what that entails all out and out but I'd sure like to think I'd hear him say that to me hmm think about that and if we've been faithful that's what we'll hear him say now that might not thrill you but it thrills me that gets me excited what a wonderful thought now verse 9 I John who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ which was in the isle it is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. You reckon we might have to go through something like that? Are you ready? Are you ready? What would you do? What would I do before the rapture if I had to go through something like that? Would you stay true? Would I? He's there for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now just... Uh, Verse 10 and 11. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. 
and what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Now, here are some great verses telling us about the future and what we have for us in the days ahead. I want you to turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Here is another tremendous chapter that describes the future for you and me. I'll give you a verse in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 if we don't get to that tonight. I'd like for you to read. Listen, I'd like to ask you to do this. If you have not read through the book of Revelation, why don't you do this? Read the book of Daniel, then read the book of Revelation. Would you do that? And then read 1 Thessalonians 4 that I'm going to give you here. And then read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Read all of that and it'll give you a little bit of an idea of the coming events. And they all speak of the same event, okay? And so the book of Daniel and the book of Ezekiel if you want to go along with it as well. And then uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 2 Thessalonians 2. But 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians also deal. 1 Thessalonians is primarily dealing with a rapture. 2 Thessalonians is, is dealing with uh, the tribulation period uh, and uh, so forth. Now, verse 13. Have you got it now? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. Uh, by the way, uh, I like verse 11. And that you study to be quiet and do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk honestly toward them that are without and that you may have lack of nothing. Have you ever thought what the Lord wants for us? Did you know that he wants you to lack for nothing? He wants you to have that. Now that doesn't mean you're perfect. That's not what it means. But you're fully armed. You're ready. You're ready for an event. You're ready to handle it. Now, verse 13. Listen to these verses. Now look, folk. I understand. I have a whole outline here. I have five points to an outline. I haven't even touched it because I feel like I need to say these things to preface what I'm going to say there and throughout the, the Wednesday evenings to follow. But I want you to watch this. It's very important. Verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Do you hear about the old maid that came to church and looked at the men and said, I wouldn't have any of you ignorant, brethren? Some of you, it'll get you in a minute. It'll, it'll hit you in just a moment. It's an old maid, she's not married, and she said to the men, I wouldn't have any of you ignorant brethren. You'll get it later. All right, you'll get it. All right, here's what he's saying. But I would not have you ignorant brethren concerning them which sleep that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. When we go back to Tennessee, if I've not been there in a while, I'll go to two different cemeteries, uh, Smyrna Cemetery, Concord Cemetery, where my family is buried. And I'll go to where my dad is buried. I led my dad to the Lord. And where my mother is buried and where my grandmother is buried and my grandfather's, and I'll just walk by. And, of course, I know they're not there. I know that. Uh, I know that. But that's where they were laid to rest, and that's where I preached the funeral. But I'll stand there. And you know what I'll think about when I stand there? They're up there. They're up there. They're with the Lord. And I'm going to go meet them one day. I'm going to be there with them. Isn't that a great thought? Isn't that a great thought? And so he says, don't sorrow. You, you have loved ones. Their body is sleeping in the ground. But their soul and spirit is with the Lord. Isn't that great? Now watch verse 14. For if or since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or go before them which are asleep, because they will go first. 
For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Do you hear what one old preacher said? He said, do you know the reason the dead in Christ will rise first? Because they've got six feet to go further than we do. Did you get that, Jesse? Did you get that? Okay, just, just making sure. <laughs> All right, the dead in Christ will rise first. And then I like this. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now look at chapter 5. Chapter 5 has got a message for us that's here now. Now watch what I'm saying. I'm going to read it down to about verse 12. And here's what I want you to think with me. What the Holy Spirit's saying is this. While you're waiting on the Lord's coming, or you're waiting when you die and you'll go, here's the way you should live. Here's how you should live until that time. All right? Verse 1 of chapter 5. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. When they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as to tra travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that they should take you or overtake you as a thief. You are the children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as others, but let us watch and be sober. Brother Lou and I were visiting today, and we passed the road where we were going, and we come back and turned around, and we turned around in the Jeho uh, Jehovah's Witness parking lot. And I looked at that building, and I thought, how awful, how sad that they believe a lie. They believe a lie. Aren't you glad we've got the truth? Aren't you glad of that? I'm so happy that I have the truth. Somebody gave me the truth, all right? Verse 6, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. They that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Let me stop right here. Wouldn't it be a terrible thing that just right now, let's say that in the next few moments the rapture is going to take place. What about people who just occasionally go to church, don't read their Bible, don't pray, never witness, never tithe? What do you think it's going to be for them? And what are they going to feel like when in one-sixth of a second <laughs> they're changed in the moment of a twinkling of an eye and they go home to be with the Lord but they know they've not lived like they should. I don't want that to happen to me. I hope you don't want that to happen to you. I hope that when you hear that trumpet sound and you're up with the Lord, you're thinking, I'm not perfect, but I've served him. Wouldn't that be a great thing to know? And so in verse 8, don't be drunken, but verse 8, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now watch. And edify one another, even as also ye do. Let's ask, if you're a member of Gospel Light Baptist Church, will you join me? Here's what I want to pray. Lord, help me to be a blessing to my brothers and sisters. Lord, help me to be awake. And help me to be a comfort to my fellow believers. Wouldn't that be a great thing if every member of our church did that? We set out to comfort one another. It's such a sad thing sometimes to preach a funeral. You knew the one that passed away. Sometimes preachers don't know that a pastor preaches his members' funerals and he loves them if he's a man of God, if he's a right man, kind of a man of God. 
And he stands there and he's supposed to give comfort to them when he's hurting himself. But he wants to show comfort to them. And we ought to show comfort to one another while we're alive. Amen? And so he says, Wherefore comfort ye yourselves together and edify, the word edify is build up, one another even as also you do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and to be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that you render, so that you none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. I like this. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. You know what he's saying? Practice these things till I come. Practice them with one another. Now I'm just going to finish the chapter and then we'll be closed. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. And for men, that's handshakes all around. Amen. Do I get an amen there? That's handshakes all around. All right. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And that's what we want. That his love and peace be with us. We'll talk about the presentation of the book of Revelation. We'll talk about the purpose of the book. We'll talk about the penman of the book uh, next week and, and look at these things. And then Sunday evening where we're back over in chapter 9, 19 of Revelation. Now invite somebody to come Sunday. Call somebody. Call one of our members that's not been here for a while. And let's pray for our Sunday school, getting back in Sunday school, uh, getting the children's church back, and getting all of these things going. And that will help us uh, in all so many different areas. And I thank God for all the people that's volunteered to do this. And they tell me they're anxious to get going, and I'm anxious to get going too. And thank God for you and your faithfulness. Pray for us and pray one for another. All right, let's stand and we'll be dismissed in prayer.